So we're going to try a little attempt here to explain how gravity works by simulating it. We're going to swap out gravity for magnetism. So obviously it isn't technically gravity. You know, the principles are the same. So what we've got here, I've suspended a globe and I've sliced the globe open and I've placed a magnet inside. Now, the whole idea of gravity is that it's a force that acts to pull everything towards the surface of the Earth from every direction, and that's towards the centre of mass. So we're simulating that because there's a, a kind of ball bearing shaped uh, magnet in the centre of this globe. And just like with gravity, the force of the magnetism will get weaker as you move further away from the centre. So if we just had the the magnet itself, obviously it would be very strong and it would attract things um, pretty powerfully, but that uh, level of att attraction is actually decreased as you get further away. This here is what we're going to use to you know, simulate water covering the globe. And this is ferrofluid, which is attracted to uh, magnetic elbow uh, magnets and so it's a fluid it's liquid but it has magnetic attraction so this is what we're going to use to simulate and show the way that fluid will behave when it is attracted to the surface towards towards the center of this object now with this being magnetically attractive you'll see that it reacts with the the globe even when it's in the, uh, the container. So you can see that that's affecting it slightly. And the thing about it is, is if this was just the, you know, the, the ball bearing itself and I had done the same thing and moved it like this, it would have just snapped right into the um, container. I can actually show this. So I've got a smaller one here. And just to show you know, it's just very attractive. So, this is how it would behave if we were directly at the source. It would be, um, you know, just sticking to it immediately. Decreasing the distance from the source, obviously. You know, if you're this distance away, it's, it's going to be a bit different. Um, it's going to have an attraction, but the level of attraction increases the, the closer you are to the centre, the, the, the strongest part of the force. We're going to pour some fluid over it and hopefully this will demonstrate uh, you know, in the, the same kind of way that because there is a force attracting the liquid towards the centre of the globe that the, the liquid should form itself over the entire shape of the globe and although it will remain a liquid and it will still remain fluid, it will flow it will still um, remain, you know, surrounding the globe. It won't fall off. But you can see I've, I've stuck these bits of cardboard on. This was a kind of a last minute change that I thought to try and roughly simulate having land masses. I've cut out these bits of cardboard uh, from the super glue packet that I used to stick the two halves of the globe back together. It's a bit rough, but it will, it will serve the purposes of showing what is actually happening with the fluid flowing around the land masses uh, in theory. A couple of things that I want to show here, so first of all in a minute we'll see how it, it actually you know forms around this globe. The other thing about it is, is that um, I'm hoping that I can get this to run down the string and just show another uh, element of how fluid behaves. And another th a uh, final thing that I hope to show with this is to demonstrate that because there is a force attracting um, the fluid evenly around the, the, the sphere, that in every direction, no matter where you place the fluid, you know, the, the attraction will always be perpendicular to the source that's pulling on the, the fluid. And um, this is one of the things I think is what, you know, seems to always be confused with the way that fluids behave and the way that you know flat earthers seem to think there's an up and down so 
up is always assumed to be up here, up the top as we perceive it. But as um, you know, most other people will tell you, it, you know, it's a sphere, so it's all about orientation. So you can, you know, flip around and be looking at different angles, and you know, up is away from the surface, and uh, you know, any direction, and down is towards the surface in any direction. So that will apply when we're applying the fluid to the globe. If I apply it at different points, that you should see it being attracted in straight lines towards the surface, regardless of the orientation. So what I want to do is get some of the fluid to run down the string, but it's very thin. So, so I don't know if this is going to be easy to see, but when it's running down the string, the fluid forms blobs. It forms rivulets that, that you know are essentially spherical in shape, and you'll see this in various ways in nature when water is flowing down. Um, you know, over leaves and branches and, and just a, pretty much anything you can think of. This is all to do with the, the, the true nature of fluid or water is that it will seek to it will seek an equilibrium and because if there's, if there's no force acting on it in any specific direction then it's free to seek that equilibrium that uh, you know it will, it will attempt to do that in the, the, the direction where there is least resistance and it requires the least energy to achieve it. And so, in the absence of any force, that's in every single direction, which means that it will go a spherical. It will, it will go, you know, make a, a spherical shape, which is just what we observe when people go in the Vomit Comet and on the ISS and things like that, because what they're doing is they're cancelling out the acceleration of gravity, which is pulling the water down by moving at the same time and to the same speed with it. So water is then free to behave as it would without the the force pulling on it, essentially, which means that it forms spheres. So this is the same kind of idea, that, except that obviously it's being pulled down by the attraction of gravity as it runs down the string. And so if we could see close enough, unfortunately the camera doesn't have a, you know, Good enough zoom for this, but you would see that it's formed so it's spherical blobs, and then obviously as it's being pulled, you'll get a tail that can, you know as it gets dragged down. So oh, drop that one. Further. So we just want to increase the amount of fluid and get that to start running onto the, the, the globe here, and then. This way, you know, I'm not directly applying it. It's making its own way and finding its own place on the surface. The problem might be that some of it will run under these pieces of cardboard because it was, you know, it's pretty rough and it's quite hard to make that <coughs> sit evenly on the surface. Um, but we'll do so much from the top and then, well, uh, still make a point at applying some from other directions to show what I was talking about with with the force and how it behaves when it's directed by the force pulling it towards the centre oops I'll just try going directly onto it for a minute just spread some around none of this fluid should fall off this, it should all just stick round to the surface. Um, and we'll just move it around. Should probably have worn gloves and might stop and just quickly put a pair on. So if we get some more, just move it around a bit. Unfortunately, obviously, because I had to split the ball, was a kind of bit of a line. But we'll just push some on. Right. This is a bit awkward, but when you start filling it up with more fluid, you see that it just is with the ball. And so it's like a thin coating anyway, unless I go crazy with applying it. And that's one of the things that people keep trying to explain when we're talking about scaling the earth down. Now, <clears throat> If the if this were you know a scale model of the globe, the amount of fluid on it would be pretty low 
you know, it's really just like a thin skin, almost, the water that we've got really, it just seems really big to us because we're tiny. I don't know if the camera can see it okay, so we'll just try and just quickly show what I was talking about a second ago. So if we watch this coming out and see where it goes, it's attracted, you can just make it out, it's attracted towards the surface. Um, let's see. Need to get some more. So, doesn't you see that? It's what you would possibly call falling up. It's being attracted to the surface. And it's running over the surface present, falling down. Now the spikes are to do with the nature of the magnetic fields, but um, you know, as I say, we're just simulating the effect of gravity here by having a weak magnetic field holding fluid to the surface. Uh, but it gives you the idea. Let's put the gloves on. And I've got some more fluid here. As I was trying to show, you know, whatever direction uh, place this on the ball, the fluid will go towards the surface. It won't fall out of the pipette and fall onto the, the surface of the table here. Um, so it doesn't really matter. It's kind of awkward to get a direction and keep it in camera, but... You know, it's always going to attract towards the surface. So if we go towards the bottom, you can see that it actually falls up, as it were. So this is the thing, this is the same idea of what's happening with gravity is everything's being attracted towards the surface. And if you obviously were to orientate yourself as though you were standing on that surface, which I'll try and, try and show with flipping this other camera around, Then obviously falling, you know, to you would look normal, it would look like it's falling down. Because that's what down is, it's just towards the surface. It's got nothing to do with a literal up and down and it's nothing to do with north and south. So I know this is this is getting a bit messy then unfortunately the cardboard thing's been a it's not really working the way I would like. Um but we'll try and get this stuff round the ball. Let's try and get some in between here. It's a mess, but you can see that it's it's sticking to the surface. Which if this was you know normal water, it obviously it would fall off because it's been attracted to the surface of the earth. Which is obviously one of the things that you need to think about here. So obviously if you if you consider this as a, a kind of miniature model of the earth and think about you standing on the surface of it, looking at all this fluid, you know. Um, obviously, if you were standing on there with a tiny little um, magnet, if you like, to simulate, you know, a very, very small magnet and then trying to pour some fluid over that very small, weak magnet, that is obviously going to be over taken by the force of the bigger magnet at the centre of the globe here. It's the same principle again with gravity. This is why, you know, people who think that um, because water falls off a, a, a ball like this, normally when you try and show it, it, it proves, disproves gravity, it's actually completely the opposite. It proves gravity. That's the reason the water's fallen in the first place, just like everything on Earth is, you know, accelerating towards the surface of the Earth, basically. The problem, of course, with using gravity to try and simulate, uh, sorry, with using magnetism to try and simulate gravity is that magnetism works off of two poles and that's not the case with gravity. So there's a, a different level of attraction uh, with the, the way I'm trying to do this. It's, uh, you know, it's going to be more it's going to want to go towards the poles more than it is going to want to stay on the sides. So I'm just going to help it a bit by just putting some across different points. 
you can see it there it's kind of trying to move towards the the center there because that's more where one of the poles of the magnet is but it's still as I say it's not falling off unless I give it you know a lot of force it's a bit messy but it gives you the idea because this is a you know a horrible black fluid and it's it's sticking to the side of this ball so you can still see most of this you know you can see the cardboards uh, um, and then the, the black fluid all around the globe I'm just going to grab something to quickly tidy up a bit because I unfortunately dropped the thing yeah. so I see it's a bit of a mess but this whole thing is, is covered in this black fluid now it's um, you know quite a thin coating but it's still there it's not dripping off normally just like any fluid if I push this out it'll just fall and it'll be absorbed there but If I do the same thing, assuming this has got fluid in it properly, you know the fluid, it moves up, it's attract, it's attracted, there we go, to the ball. So that's always going to be the case, you know, unless I mess up, you know, and, and drop it down and whatever. As long as it's within the field of influence, uh, the, the grav you know, the, this simulated gravitational field using the magnetic field, the same principle applies that the fluid will just, you know, this is the thing with fluid. Yes, it's fluid. Yes, it flows, but it flows and, and it behaves the way it does according to the forces acting on it. So in this case, we've got magnetism acting on it and with the earth, we've got gravity acting on it. So, you know, the principle is the same. It's perfectly free to flow around the ball but it doesn't move away from the surface of the ball that as long as it's been acted upon by a force it's possible for the fluid to conform to a shape I'm going to try and get better coverage on it again you know it's spiky at the bottom because that's to do with the way magnetic fields behave and the fluid is obviously behaving according to the, the field but you can get the idea that the the fluid is you know it's attracted enough by p placing the, the magnet inside the globe I've decreased the strength of the magnetic field to try and create a more of a kind of accurate simulation of gravity here rather than having it directly onto the magnet which would be cheating because it would just you know slam right into it and I could put pretty much any amount of fluid I want on it and it would it would stay you know like a big bubble of fluid this is a little bit you know more challenging than just to demonstrate that you know you've got a weaker field and this is the same thing that you experience with gravity as well you know the further away you move away from the earth the weaker the field this is why we have um, the same, you know, the things that we're used to uh, in real life. We've got, you know, increased pressure the more we move towards the centre. Just the same way as the force of that magnet would be stronger and more attractive to anything that gets closer and closer to it. It's the same idea with gravity with the centre of mass. You've got, you know, very high pressures in the bottom of the sea and decreasing pressure as you get up to sea level. And then... You've got, you know, 15 PSI roundabout with the air pressure at our level. And then as you move further away, you get, um, you know, lower air pressure. And that's, uh, you know, the way that the centre of mass attracts material towards it. And the what we call heavier material forces its way towards the, the centre of mass. But it forces its way there because it's more attracted because there's more mass in that material and the material with less mass gets pushed out of the way but it's still trying to move towards that so the same could apply again if you think of it as magnetism if they have had a, a strong magnet and then increasingly weaker magnets they would be less and less attracted to the centre of this globe but if you were to also stack them in a sense you know in that in that manner 
obviously they're they're weaker and they're also further away. So being further away and weaker because they're getting pushed out of the way by the stronger, you know, you've got this uh, kind of almost exponential effect where the the effect upon the lighter material is decreased as it moves further away. And that's, you know, so with gravity, it's lighter material, but what we call heavy and light is a function of the mass that's being attracted towards the centre of the Earth. So, when somebody says that, you know, density is the reason why things fall, well, that doesn't make sense anyway, because density isn't a force and it doesn't supply a unified direction of acceleration, which is what we observe with every single thing on the Earth, and that includes all the fluids and all the gases. So even helium, which many people seem to think is um, somehow gravity-defined, it's not gravity-defined, it's what I've just explained, that heavier things push the helium out of the way, but the helium is still trying to reach from here and get towards the centre of the Earth, and if there wasn't this heavier stuff in the way, it would fall towards the Earth. And the, the separation, you know, the heavier towards the lighter, is all about density, yes, but that's because density is... A measure of mass and so the attraction of mass um, defines where each of these elements will find itself positioned with, uh, with relation to the centre of mass. If it's got more mass it's going to be more attracted towards the centre just that, like a strong magnet would be more attracted towards the centre of this and it will you know head towards the centre easier and it will in the case of Air and you know different the different gases in air, the gases with more mass um, per volume will have a stronger attraction and force their way towards the centre, and doing so will push um, the, the the weaker you know the, the elements that are less attracted are not only you know not as strongly pulled towards the centre, but the things that are more strongly pulled are forcing them out of the way and forcing them on a higher layer, a top layer, if you like. But, but you get the idea that, that, you know, the mass of an object um, is, um, can, you know, in a sense be related to what we're doing here, except with the magnetism in terms of the strength of the, the attraction. Just the same as this fluid isn't leaping out of the pipette because I'm, you know, whatever, but... If I was right next to the actual magnets that's in the centre, this fluid would actually get drawn right out of the pipette and onto the magnet. So it's all about the, the strength of the, the attraction, the distance to the centre, and how a attracted something is. In this case, it's with magnetism or uh, ferrous material, and with everything that we see around about us on the Earth, it's, it's, it's mass. You can see there's fluid all the way around it. And it's not coming off, and we can spin it. Now, the Earth only spins one revolution per day, but we can spin it. And the fluid should stay on it. Now, that amount of spin is ridiculous. It it's far exceeds what the Earth spins at. So, even if the fluid were to come off at this speed... It's, it doesn't mean that it would, the same thing would happen with the Earth, because that is just... I mean, you, we spin once every 24 hours. So, you know, that's just way, way, way beyond that. Even even just a gentle spin like this is much more force. It's, you know, it's much more... Uh, in, really, in scale, that would, that would be more centrifugal force than what the, the Earth experiences, really. As I say, there's a bit of pulling because the because we've got north and south magnetic fields, the, the fluid wants to flow towards the, the pole of the magnet. It's obviously slightly different from what we experience on Earth. But you can see that it can flow around. Um, hold on, I'll just pick this up. So you can see it flowing and moving around. As a liquid, it can do that. It can flow and move and, and ripple and, you know, it can do all that stuff, but it still stays attached to the, the surface of this little globe because of that field of attraction that we've created. 
So again, this is the same idea that people are seem to be confused with the thing that because water flows, it must be contained within an actual container with edges. And you can see that, you know, as long as there is an attractive force acting upon a fluid, it will maintain its boundaries on an object without what we consider to be borders. Um, because it's still a fluid, it's still free to flow within the parameters of uh, the forces that are directing how it behaves. But in this case, the force is only acting on it in one way, and that's to pull it in towards the centre. But in every other way, it's free to flow, so it's fine. It can flow over the edge, so to speak. It can flow over the sides, it's fine. And again, you know, how you perceive that when you're standing on the earth, it just depends on where your personal orientation. It's always going to look the same to you at your local level. And it, it doesn't make any difference which part of the globe you're standing on. As long as there's a, a, a force acting upon well, anything, because everything, as I say, um, is attracted towards the surface of the earth. But as, you know, that's the thing with the, the water thing, which seems to get people, is they believe that because it's a fluid, it's somehow um, different from every other uh, material and it's just not true uh, you know in fact in some ways it's more likely that it, it would be affected by this kind of force precisely because it's a fluid it's more malleable so it's more likely to flow around an object obviously a fluid is free to flow all the way around and you know it's all it needs is that one force one force in one direction to keep it held to that surface everything that we're doing every experiment that we do is always subject to the effects of gravity as well I've just done this in such a way that I've created a, just a strong enough magnetic field that the fluid won't come flying off the ball and it will stick to it. But it's still always going to be subject to the effects of gravity and then in addition to that you've got the north-south pole of the magnet in here and that's obviously going to draw fluid towards the poles. So it's a little bit unevenly covered. It never falls off, it just runs across the surface. So we're going to try and f just fill up with a bit more fluid. Um, it's possible I might exceed the strength of the field to some extent, but just I want to try and get as much fluid on here as possible and really kind of cover it. Now you can see it flows, but it, it flows across the surface. It never attempts to leave the surface. The fluid doesn't want to leave the surface because there's a, a, a field around this object which is attracting it towards the centre and that's the main thing. As I say there's still gravity to contend with to some extent and then the north-south poles will attract more towards either end of the globe rather than towards the centre which is different from the way gravity behaves. But the principle is the same, you know, there's a magnetic attraction at the centre of the globe, which is why at any point this fluid will stay, you know, it doesn't matter which way I orientate it, this fluid will remain on the surface of the ball. It's a bit messy with the cardboard continent thing, maybe we could do it again without that just to make it a bit easier to see. As you can see, the whole thing is covered in fluid. The, the strength of the field that's holding the fluid there is enough uh, to keep it all round the surface even when it's spinning like this, it's not coming flying off and making a mess in a living room. There's no problem at all with a liquid behaving this way if there's a reason for it to be attracted towards uh, an object and in this case obviously what we're saying is that it is attracted towards that object because of gravity in real life and that's what matters with it, the fluid thing you know people think it looks level that's because we're so tiny in relation to whatever spot we're standing on and looking at a very we're only looking at a tiny 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 little bit of it when we look at that and any object any shape will look pretty much will, will look flat to you when you're small enough standing on the surface and then primarily the idea is that people seem to think that because it's a fluid it somehow needs to be within a container with built up edges essentially and you can see here that as long as a force is acting on the fluid it still remains as a, as a fluid, it still flows around the surface um, if we could get down small enough to it and you know create local 
currents on it, you'd see the ripples and things like that. It was still a fluid, but it's, it's been acted upon by a force that keeps it um, always heading towards the surface, towards the, the centre of this object, and obviously the closest it'll ever get is the surface, and that's exactly how we observe gravity. Okay, so I'm just in the process of dismantling this, and you can see, you know, I've, I've soaked up some of the fluid, but the thing is, this is a, a sponge ball, and obviously I had cut it, so a lot of the fluid was free to to leak in to the ball. So as a result, what's happened here, you can see if I spread this apart, as all the fluid has uh, been attracted towards the magnet, which is in the centre. And this is what I was talking about with, obviously, I'm trying to avoid having it be quite so strong, you know, uh, that's kind of cheating. I want it to be a, a weaker field to, to simulate gravity and to show it, throw it going round. Like, the surface itself is non-magnetic rather than being directly onto the magnet. But this is a good... The thing about this, uh, the fluid being... Right, so I just had to cut the video at this point because I had a bit of a spill and it, the, the magnet fell. But even though it fell and rolled across the table, which I can show you, the, look at that. So some of the fluids rolled off. Even though it's done that, most of the fluid is still attached. You know, when you touch it, you can see it's fluid, but it generally remains attached to this. Which is, you know, quite amazing. But the thing about it is, is that this is a fluid you're seeing. Everything, all the black stuff, it's all, it's all fluid. And if I, if I move it around, you can hopefully see that it, you can see the kind of, the, the spinning, the spikes moving and stuff like that. If I can just kind of give it a shake. this will work it. The other camera just it wasn't focusing and it was kind of hard to see what I was trying to explain. Hopefully I won't drop this while I'm, I'm talking but this is the, the the spherical magnet covered in the fluid that it soaked up through the sponge and what I was trying to just show is you can see it looks like a kind of you know almost gelatinous the way it moves because that's all fluid that you're looking at. You can't see the, the, you know, the little magnet in the middle. So you can see the fluid coming off on the gloves, obviously, proving that it is fluid, but it's still mostly staying attached to where the magnet is, and you can see by the rippling, and you know, it's you can tell it's it's fluid, it's free to move, it's free to flow, but it stays within the boundaries of the surface it's attracted to, just as I was saying. It's just obviously it's a more pronounced effect when it's directly onto the magnet, but you can see, you know, if I... If I do that, you know, I'm actually physically spinning the fluid around and, you know, pushing into it. And you can see it's fluid and I'm pushing into it, it's not coming away. You know, you always get a bit of residue, but it's, it's just it's staying attached. It's quite hard to manipulate, unfortunately, but, um, you know, you can see the, the fluid motion of the liquid, no problem at all, and it's, uh, you know, as long as it's been acted on by a force, it's fine, it'll stay in motion, but it'll, it'll you know, be, be bend and curve and behave according to whatever forces are acting on it.